Hi everyone, this is Sean Ismail from Cloud Ranger, and you are viewing the Microsoft Azure training. Today we are going to talk about the Azure Virtual Networks, and this is the part one of several parts that are going to be in Azure Virtual Networks sessions. Um, I have divided this in multiple parts. Initially, I thought that we could cram a lot together, but then I thought that we are going to make this in several parts because of the amount of uh, information that we have to cover uh, for the 7533 exam. So this is taken directly from uh, the 7533's exam requirements. And as you can see, it's quite a bit to cover. There is configure a virtual network session, section. There's a modify a network configuration and design and implement a multi-site or hybrid network session. My goal is to go through each of these requirements and provide a demonstration as we do this. So a couple of things will happen. One, we will definitely cover as much as possible from uh, this for exam point of view. And by providing a demonstration and talking about it, you will also be ready to do similar things in your lab or in a production environment after careful planning. So I'm not going to just make this session based on just the exams. So we might do a couple of steps more than required for the exam just to make sure that everything fits in together. So let's get it started as there is a lot to cover. The first thing we will talk about is the building blocks of Azure infrastructure as a service. We have talked about this before. The three building blocks for Azure infrastructure as a service is compute, networking, and storage. We have talked a brief about compute, and today we are going to actually deep dive into real exam requirements about networking. And in the future, we'll be talking about storage as well. This, sessions, this session for networking sort of assumes certain prerequisites and certain knowledge that you should already have. So I'm not going to go into basic what is a network or how networking components come together to make a network. I'm not going to talk about virtualization, virtualization, virtual networks. I'll assume that you already know a little bit about all this and um, we will continue from there. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is a virtual network or a VNet? And this is with respect and context to Azure virtual networking and VNet. Microsoft's explanation and definition for this is that it's a, it's a customer managed, secure, isolated virtual network or it's a network overlay that can be configured in Azure. The virtual network in Azure is not too different from the virtual network you are probably accustomed to in Hyper-V or VMware or whatever on-premise virtual virtualization technology you are currently using. So if you know a little bit about virtual networks and how virtual networks work, it is similar to how it works in the cloud on Azure from our point of view here in this course. So let's talk about a little bit in details about the Azure virtual network. So when you create a virtual network on Azure, certain things happen. The services and the virtual machines that part of the same VNet or virtual network, I'll keep interchanging VNet and virtual network, but they essentially mean the same thing. So the services and the VMs that are part of the same VNet can access each other. So what I have over here, let me get, let me get my pointer. This is a virtual network. This is how Visio would do for Azure virtual networks. And we have two virtual machines in this virtual network. And it's for the subnet 192.168.1.0 with a 24-bit mask or 255, 255, 255.0. What services and VMs that are part of same VNet can access each other means is that this virtual machine can access this virtual machine and virtual machine over here can access this one. But when they're not part of this virtual network, for example, VM1 and VM2 cannot access VM3 and vice versa. You'll notice right away that this is sort of stuff you're used to already with virtual virtual networks on your Hyper-V or VMware. It's similar. That's 
the similar concept in Azure as well, that you can create multiple virtual networks and anything within the virtual network is isolated so they can only talk to each other. Let's talk about certain standard details about virtual networks in Azure subscription. One is that subscription can have as many as 100 virtual networks. And by default, they give you 10. You need any more than 10, 10 virtual networks, and you might need so under many circumstances. You'll have to actually call up Microsoft and ask them to increase it. And each subscription can have up to 100 VNet. Having said that, this can also obviously change. Microsoft keeps changing and building more in Azure, so this number might not be uh, accurate in another couple of years. They might add more or you know, they might remove some of this. Second, each VNet can have as many subnets. So each of these virtual networks, so for example, this virtual network over here in this example has one subnet. But you could have as many subnets as possible based on different combinations that we will demonstrate, we'll get into when we go into a demonstration. But you can have as many subnets as you want. The virtual networks are limited to a single region. We have talked about in our previous sessions that Microsoft has various re regions across the world where they have data centers. And any virtual network that you will create will have to be associated to a single region. Obviously, you can create multiple virtual networks and you can assign them to several different regions. So you may have a region where you create a virtual network, which is East USA, and you can also have one, for example, in Singapore or somewhere in Hong Kong, and that subnet will be located there or on the systems there. But anytime you create one subnet, all the machines will have to be associated to one region, means all the virtual machines will be in one region as well. So for example, this virtual network over here, if it was in East USA, that means these two virtual machines when they're associated with this virtual network will also be located in the same region. And Microsoft Azure calls this regional VNets or regional virtual networks. So then the other thing we have to notice is that Microsoft currently is not supporting IPv6 on these virtual networks. And you have to think that this actually might change in future as the need arises, but for now there's no IPv6 support. And the last thing I want to talk about is that all services deployed within a VNet can access internet. So this virtual network, when it's created, and you create two virtual machines in here, by default, they have access to the internet. You do not have to do any specific inter-VNet routing or access control or anything to access the internet. And for you guys who work with virtualization, you might realize that when we create a separate virtual network on Hyper-V, it by default does not have access to the internet unless you associate a NIC or a port that's already connected to internet. So uh, this might be a little tricky for some people. So for example, you have your Hyper-V and you have tried to create a production. Now you are trying to create a development or multiple development environment on Hyper-V. Uh, you might eventually have issues associating them to a NIC or a port which has access to the internet uh, because of various reasons, right? Because you might have to act, make it access to the internet only to find out that you are taking this dev environment and you're exposing it to production as well and you're losing that isolation. And this has been a typical problem with virtualization uh, on premises. But as you can see on uh, Azure, this is not a problem. You can create as many virtual network you want. They're already connected with isolation to the internet and uh, you don't have to do any tricky DNS stuff for them to access the internet. So now moving on to the next slide, we want to talk about a um, couple of things. The first thing we want to talk about is cloud only VNet. So technically there are three configurations or three solutions uh, you may possibly have for your cloud service you may have a solution where you will not have a VNet at all. There'll be no virtual networks because you just don't need any. You may have a situation where you will only need a cloud-only VNet, and we'll talk about in details what a cloud-only VNet is in a bit, 
or you could have a cross-premises virtual network which we'll get into a lot of details in this session as well as in the subsequent sessions that were that are to come so by not having any VNet, it's pretty simple. You go and create a cloud service, put a virtual machine in there, and you are not connecting to any local virtual network. They are directly connected to the internet, and you can do whatever you want from there. And then there will be a time when you need a cloud only VNet. And let's talk about what cloud only VNets are first. So a cloud only VNet is created when a VNet is created in Azure. So if right now we go and create a virtual network, it will be called a cloud-only virtual network. Clouds and virtual machines are accessed through endpoints on a cloud-only virtual net. So by default, any virtual machine that we will have on a virtual network will only be accessed from outside through endpoints. And in our previous session, when we went on a brief uh, uh, demo on how to create a virtual machine. We have seen that we were downloading the RDP file and we were accessing that virtual machine through a public IP address to get into the RDP just because when we are creating the virtual machine, we were creating an endpoint for RDP, which is port 389. So the other thing we have to remember is that when we create a cloud-only virtual network, we do not have to have many considerations such as the on-premise network addressing. So think about this. You have a network on your cloud and you have your on-premise data center or your server room or your lab, whatever, and you want to make both of them talk. If you have ever created a site-to-site -site network, then you'd know that um, you can't have two address space overlap each other. So if I have 192.168.1.0 and the site I'm trying to connect to is 192.168.1.0 address space as well, this both will not work because they overlap each other. So similar to cloud, when you connect, uh, when you create a cloud-only virtual network, you're basically saying that I'm not connecting this to anybody on premises or another site. So you'll not have to, uh, make any considerations or plans around it. So it's very simple. And just because we are not going to do any site-to-site -site on a cloud-only virtual network, there's no VPN devices required, no configuration or anything as such required for that. And uh, which makes cloud-only virtual network very simple to configure because there's not a whole lot to think about or plan before you create those. But our main interest after the cloud-only virtual network will be the cross-premises virtual network or the hybrid networks. And you will keep hearing about this a lot when we talk about Microsoft Azure, or even you'll get into this a lot when you're doing production work, just because this is where most organizations will go. Um, and what I mean by this is that if you look at the slide, what cross-premises virtual networks do is it's a connection of on-premise network with cloud virtual network. So you are basically connecting from your data center to the cloud directly through a tunnel, a site-to-site -site tunnel. It's very simple, but this is how most organizations will do it. So for example, today you are in a data center and this is your on-premise network. You are basically creating something on the cloud and what you are doing is creating a site-to-site -site connection so you can access internally from your on-premise to your cloud services here on Azure. This is, when, this is, this is the basic uh, building essence or the basic fundamentals of cloud that it's going to be an extension from your on-premise to the cloud environment. And this is how actually it works. And that's why I mentioned that you will hear about this a lot because chances are you probably are on-premise today and you want to take advantage of cloud as an extension of this environment. So you have three web servers here. You probably want to add two more on demand when you need it. and you have to make sure that they talk to inside, for example, other database or mail or exchange servers here. And these virtual machines will talk site to site as if they're currently uh, just on your network over here. 
the typical benefits or advantages of site to site internal extension of your land. So that's what cross premises means that it will cross your on premises and go to the cloud and that's how it will work. And it requires a VPN service, obviously, because you will need a VPN device here and you will need a VPN conversation, a uh, configuration here, and they both will uh, talk to each other and create those tunnels for you. It's pretty simple once we actually go through a demonstration of how this all works. So now the next thing we have to go into, now that we talked about the cloud only virtual network and cross premises network, is the virtual network address spaces and the subnets. And this is actually quite important when we try to make a virtual network. When, you, when we create a virtual network, we will have to obviously specify the topology to Azure, saying that how the network is going to be. And part of that is actually having an address and a subnet. So what we are going to do is provide an address space saying that this is the address and this is where the subnets will be created from. So just like any internal network or a private network like your LAN, there will be a private address space. And this is basically the range the virtual machines and services can use. So if you have a per public address space 192.168, dot one dot zero with a 24 bit mask, then you know that this private space is where all your virtual machines and services will be getting their IPs from. Um, private addresses, and this is basic networking, they're non-routable. So obviously the public network cannot access your private address space. That means that unless you have your virtual network uh, created and um, those IP addresses that you have are not going to be routable outside. This, this is basic networking stuff, guys. And one thing in Azure is that all network and the notations are in classless inter-domain routing notation, the CEDAR notation, that's what we call them. And uh, this is basically a combination of your your IP address and the subnet mask. So for example, you know a slash eight is just a 255 or a slash 16 would be 255, 255, zero, zero subnet mask. And that's how your privacy addressing is going to be as well. So the three address of space that Azure provides to you for your internal private LAN or virtual network, however you call it, are 10.0.0.0 forward slash eight or 172.16.00 slash 12 and 192.168.00 slash 16. This is usually more than enough address that you'll ever need for your internal networking. And you might be using something similar to this already on your on-premise, for example, 10 dot whatever or 172.16 or 192.168. The thing that you have to remember here is, and that's what we talked about in the last slide, is that when you are doing a cross-premise, means you are doing uh, an extension of your current network to cloud, you have to make sure when you do that site to site that you are not going to overlap. If you are going to do something in the lab today and you don't have to worry about on-premises things yet, then this is nothing you have to worry about. You can just pick up one of these ranges and you can create your subnets in there and go your merry way. But if you are going to do this in production and, for example, you have a 192.168.0016 address space on your on-premise, you just have to make sure when you're planning on your Azure, the virtual networks, you don't have the same range. Otherwise, they're going to overlap and you will not be able to successfully establish a site-to-site -site connection. And this is no different from a site-to-site. -site. You do this, if you have a bunch of tunnels for your branch offices or your head offices, you already know this. Okay, so the next thing after we have discussed with the address spaces is the subnets. So as we know about subnets is that it basically breaks up your network for more manageable sections. So you could have a bunch of subnets on your same private space for different things. All services can be accessed across subnets. This is something we are going to demonstrate when we get there. But what this means is that if you have a web service somewhere and you have 
bunch of uh, other uh, service consuming uh, virtual machines, you'll have to remember that they can access each other. And by this, I do not mean that they can ping each other. I just mean that if there are other services like FTP services, web services, and they have endpoints, they'll be able to access each other internally. And there is a lot of isolation even though around it, and we will talk about it when we go through the demonstration and make it a little bit more clear. There are features that Microsoft recently came out with called network security groups, which can be utilized to implement access control lists. So you can have two subnets and they can talk to each other, but you can have access control lists that can prevent from certain services be accessed outside the subnet or the virtual machine um, if you configure the access control list to do so. So what I mean by that you can have multiple subnets and how can they be beneficial? So I have two examples here. I have subnet one, which is 192.168.1.0 with a 24-bit mask and a subnet two with a 24-bit mask here with a 192.168.2.0. So these web servers will not be on the same subnet as the FTP server. So there is an isolation here. But if this FTP servers would like to access the web servers for some reason, they will be able to do that. That's what it means by all services can be accessed across subnets. And unless you put an ACL on this subnet, they all will be able to access each other. And we'll not talk about the ACL of the network security groups in the session today, but we will show how uh, the subnets can access the services across each other. Okay, so the next thing right now I want to do is actually jump into a demo. We have talked enough about virtual networks to get it started. And um, we will create a couple of virtual networks and put some virtual machines in there and we will see what we can do. So let's go to our machine real quick here. I have already brought up my subscription here. Uh, it, it was just by going to manage.windowsazure.com and logging in. And we are logging in with my account, cloudrangerblog at hotmail.com. Obviously, you're going to use your account to get in. Right now, under all items, you can see besides default directory, I do not have everything. And that's where you ideally want to be at this point. So if you have anything else that you have created, go ahead and delete them if it's a lab environment. And... Uh, let's go and get into creating a virtual network. So the way you create a virtual network from the management portal here is if you go down to networks here, currently I do not have any networks, you go to new and you'll see that it will already bring us to network services, virtual network, and these are the various options we have. So the two options that we are going to work on today is the quick create and the custom create. So I'm going to go through a quick create and create a virtual network. So the first thing you need to do is give a name to your virtual network. So the first one we are going to do is Cloud Ranger. I'm going to call it Prod for production, for example. You, you can name this anything as long as it's unique, it will work. So you can put whatever you want. This is the private address spaces we had talked about. There's 10 and there is 172 to 16 and 192 to 16. And for our purposes, we'll put 192 168. And I'm going to just choose 192.168.0.0. So the subnet mask will be a 16-bit SIDR notation or 255.255.0.0. That's what this really means. And you know what? If you don't understand SIDR notations right now because you have not got into networking, go and Bing this or Google this and read a little bit about it because you need to have certain knowledge of subnetting for uh, getting this to work or plan this properly. Maybe not necessarily just getting this to work. You could probably guess here and get away with this, but eventually to plan any network, sooner or later, you have to understand how subnetting works. Microsoft does a pretty good job over here to actually you know, not make you do all this bit level math or binary math to figure this all out. So what it means by 192.168.0.0 uh, with the 16-bit mask is you basically get a range from 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. This is a lot. And like we mentioned, that your virtual network will have to be associated with a region or a location. So for my 
purposes, I'll pick East US 2. You can pick whatever you want to. I know that this is the region I want. The DNS server will discuss this later for now. I am going to go click on create a virtual network. And that is just going to go and create a virtual network called Cloud Ranger Prod. And that's really what there is to it. This is where you come and create your virtual network. We will be creating two separate networks. So I will create another one here as well. But once this completes, but what we're going to do is we're not going to do a quick create on there. We'll, we are going to go and do a regular uh, creating a virtual network just to demonstrate and show you the differences between a quick create and a regular creation of a virtual network. So we do that by coming here as well. Go to new virtual network and we'll do a custom create. And this is a little bit different. It brings up that little wizard we are accustomed to right now. So my this one will be Cloud Ranger. Uh, let's call it development. So dev. As usual, I'm going to pick East US 2. Actually, you know what? Just for the sake of demonstration, I'll go to I'm going to make this West US. And let's go to next. You can see that it's asking for a DNS server. We are not going to provide one. We are going to keep this empty. And it's also giving us certain options saying that do you want a point to site connectivity or site to site connectivity. It's important to note here is that if eventually you want this virtual network that we created, which is the Cloud Ranger dev to your on premise, which was which which is going to be a site to site connectivity, you have to do this now. You cannot do this later suddenly thinking that, hey, you know, I am going to connect to my own premises. If you already have created a virtual network and that's not created with this box checked, you can't do that afterwards. So there's a little bit of a planning that in, that's involved before you do this. So for our session today, we are not going to do any connection to on-premises. So I'm going to just leave this alone and go ahead. And here you can see that uh, it's giving you options for choosing your subnet. and it's a little bit different from the previous one because on the previous one, we were not giving so many options of creating the subnets, but here we are. This is the address space. So I'm going to get the address space 192.168.0.0. Uh, I'm going to keep this 16 as well for this virtual network. My subnet over here is going to be, for example, let's name it subnet dev. And actually, let's make this subnet web. So my all web servers will go here. I'm going to have this subnet as one zero. And for me, I'm going to choose a 24 bit. So I know that the range for this subnet is going to be 192.168.1.0 to 1.255. And I'm going to create second subnet. You can create as many subnets as you want in your address space. I'm going to call this subnet, oh, I don't know, FTP. And the range for this is going to be 2.0. This will be 25 as well. So as you can see, these are already isolated networks. This is 10 to 1.255. This is 192.168.20 to 255. So this is, again, basic networking and subnetting. We know that these are isolated. And what we are going to do is we are going to click on OK. So we have basically in this subscription right now two virtual networks. One is for production work, for example, and one is for development work. Um, this one we did a quick create, and this one we did a uh, custom create with a little bit more options for the granularity. And you can see the location over here is West USA. That's the region this dev network is in. And this one is on East USA too. Obviously you are going to create whatever is closest to you. I'm just doing this both to just demonstrate that you could pick up your network based on whatever uh, region you want to. And let's now wait for this Cloud Ranger dev to create. Meanwhile, we are going to go and explore the Cloud Ranger production network. As you can see, there's not a whole lot that happened here. When we did a custom create, uh, I mean, a, a quick create here, 
uh, it went and created this with East US location. There's a subscription virtual network ID. The status isn't created. Let's go to configure tab. Here you can see that it did not ask us for this subnet, but this quick create went ahead and created this anyways. However, in configuration, it is giving you the capability of doing something about your subnet. So you can create over here and come over here and give it a separate name, for example, like prod or whatever. And you can create this to, I don't know, I'm going to call this 1.0, change the subnet as well. So it went and guessed a couple of things for you. Click on save. Dismiss all the completed over here. So the quick create gives you, assumes a couple of things for you. And I usually use custom create because once you know how and what custom create can do, I rather have it all configured before I even go and provision it. So I have done my planning and did all of that. And this is where most people will go for doing their work rather than custom creating this. But as you can see, after custom creating, you can actually add more subnets here if you wanted to and do some things as well. So essentially, they're the same things. Uh, there is no DNS server here. And on our dev network, I want to show you the differences. If you come to configure right now, you can see that it already has those two network subnets for us in this address space. So it's no different, really. OK, so that's that's all there is to creating virtual networks, but these virtual networks really don't make any sense if you don't go and do something with it, right? So let's try to do something with this. The first thing I want to do is show you what we can do without a virtual network. So you remember those three scenarios? You have one with no VNets, one with a cloud-only VNet, which is this two, and one is a cross-premise VNet, which we will demonstrate in future sessions. Uh, I mean, a different part of the session, but for now, this is the cloud only virtual network. I'm going to show you something that we can do with a no VNet. So, for example, let's assume that we, did not, we do not have or we are not going to use these two networks. What happens? So, if you remember my previous session where we created a virtual network, we never really created any, I mean, we created a virtual machine, we never really created any virtual network, but it was still accessible and it was doing everything else. So, I'm going to do something similar right now. I'm going to go create a virtual machine. I'm going to do a quick create. I'm going to call this a Cloud Ranger VM uh, 5000, just something random. I'm going to create um, an A2 VM, put my username, put my password. And as you can see over here for the region, I'm going to just pick East US 2. This is how we created a virtual machine in Quick Create last time. Having said that, let's go to the gallery as well. And I'm going to show you over here how we create a virtual machine. This just basically gives you a little bit more information. So this is going to be Cloud Ranger VM 5000. And there's a re reason I'm showing this to you right now. Uh, 5 and 15, something happened over here. Cloud Ranger 50. And I'm going to pick up a virtual machine, well, whatever. Put in my password over here. As you can see over here, when we are creating this virtual machine under the region, affinity group, and virtual network, we can pick up any regions. But at the same time, these two options are added as well. So to create a virtual machine to be part of your network, this is where you would come. And rather than choosing these regions, you choose this virtual network. And you already know that these virtual networks are associated with one of these regions. So right away, when you create a virtual custom virtual machine, it gives you that option to put them on the network right away. If we did not have any network created, this tool would not show up here, and you'd basically pick anyone over here. And there's a reason you want to come and do the virtual network here. 
and not these regions once you have created the virtual network and I'll get into that in the demo. So for now, let's actually go back to our custom create and create one without a network. So Cloud Ranger VM 500 or 50 and it's a data center and I'm going to pick up something over here. I'm going to do a Sean password from all of that and you can see over here it's not giving you that option to pick up a network because just because this is a quick create they're assuming you're not going to do all of that so i'm not going to pick up any network this is something we have done in the last session and that's exactly what we are doing right now create a virtual machine i'm going to pause the video and come back when the virtual machine is created and i'm going to show you certain things when a virtual machine is created without the network and then we are going to create a network I mean, we created all the network. We'll create a virtual machine, which is going to use one of these networks and show you the difference. So I'll be right back. Okay, our virtual machine is created, Cloud Region 50. So I'm going to demonstrate right now what happens when you create a virtual machine and it is not part of one of your VNets. So let's go to the virtual machine here and we go to dashboard. You can see that when you created this virtual machine, it went, and this is the public IP address, the public virtual IP. So it's 104.209.129.29. And this is the DNS name. So if you RDP to this, or if you have a service, whatever, and this is the public uh, DNS name, you will be able to access the services. And this will be the IP address for the public DNS. And this is the internal IP address. I want you to notice this actually. This is what I'm trying to show. This is the uh, DIP or DIP. That's what it's called. It's the internal IP address that's associated with your virtual machine. And there are a couple of ways you can actually see what this can do. This is given to you by Azure itself, Azure DHCP. We have not obviously created in DHCP or anything, but Azure provides this to you because you have not created a virtual network and associated that virtual network with this VM. So this is what I wanted to show for this virtual machine, which was created without a virtual net assigned to it. And what I'm going to do right now is create a virtual machine and this time I'm going to pick a network that we have created. So I'm going to call this uh, Ranger VM 100. Just go through a for a course, whatever you can pick based on your requirements. I know we haven't gone through creating a virtual machine in details and we have uh, future sessions on that, but you can just follow through and create a virtual machine and get used to this process. It's not really overly complicated. Um, it's going to go and pick up a cloud service, leave this all as default. Here, we are going to this time choose a virtual network and I'm going to choose the dev environment. If you recall dev environment, we created two subnets. And it's actually offering you those two subnets right now. As soon as you choose the dev network, the subnet that we are going to choose over here is 1.0, so which is the subnet web. And I'm going to leave everything here default. Okay. So this, if you're following through, you can pause and you can pretty much put your stuff over here. And that's the VM I'm going to create. And let's go ahead and create this virtual machine. I'm going to create two virtual machines within this network to, uh, and in both subnets to demonstrate a couple of uh, interesting things. So let's go ahead and create another one. It's going to be similar. I'm going to call this one Ranger VM 200, for example, and similar in everything else. And this is really so simple. If you have followed the session once, you'll be able to do this without any issue at all. As you can see, everything is fine. 
I'm going to choose a virtual network and we are using this virtual network that we had created, Cloud Ranger Dev. And this time for the subnet, I'm going to pick this range, 192.168.2.0, and it's going to be subnet FTP. And let's do some interesting something here. I want to show you that how subnets can communicate between services. Remember that ACL we had talked about. So I'm going to create an endpoint over here for HTTP. So we will know that it's going to open the port 80 for you, besides port RDP for 3389. So this tool will take a little while. It takes a few minutes to actually create these virtual machines. If you click on the details, you can see that they do a bunch of stuff to create these virtual machines. So I'll be right back once all these virtual machines are created. Just remember that we created these two virtual machines. They both are part of the uh, uh, Cloud Ranger, uh, the Cloud Ranger Dev network, virtual network, and they both are on separate subnets. So let's pause this and come back when they are all created. Alrighty, those two machines are made and we are back again. So this is going to get really interesting right now. So I want to show you this. Let's go to Ranger VM 100 and go to the dashboard here. When we did a quick create and we did not choose a virtual network, it went and picked up an address, right? If we go to Cloud Ranger 50, go to dashboard, we can see it was random address that was picked up for the internal IP address. This is the address that the virtual machine has right now. Let's go to Ranger VM 100 and let's look at the address real quick here. Guess what? It picked up the address from the subnet that we had created. So our subnet, which is under the Cloud Ranger dev virtual network, was 192.168.1.0. So the VM, when it was being created, went and picked up one of the addresses from that range. You might have a quick question that who did provide this address to the virtual machine? Because we do not have a DHCP server here. We did not configure one. Well, Azure does that for you. It goes and it notices that it you, you have specified a VNet and it goes and picks up an address from that VNet and uses DHCP methods to provide that to the virtual machine when it's created. So this was 192.168.1.0 subnet, right? So let's go ahead and go to Ranger VM200 here and see which address did it pick up. Well, as you can see, it's 192.168.2.4 because this was the subnet which was 192.168.2. So if we go back, to our networks here to just briefly refresh our mind, you can see the dev virtual network actually had two subnets. One was 1.0, this is where Ranger VM 100 is, and one was 2.0, this is where Ranger VM 200 is. And guess what? Once you come back here and go under the Cloud Ranger dev right now, it actually shows you under the resources that these two VMs which have these IPs, and these are the subnets they are using, are using this virtual network. So it's a very quick way to come to your uh, virtual networks here and see which VMs are using them. Obviously, Cloud Ranger Prod, we have nothing here under the dashboard, as you can see, because we do not have any virtual machine that's created with this virtual network in mind. So what I tried to demonstrate here right now is that if you create quick create a virtual net a virtual machine and do not provide a VNet, Microsoft Azure just picks up a random address and puts it in there for the internal IP address. And you can see it just randomly picked up whatever. And if you actually provide one, then it picks up from that range for you and gives you the DHCP address, which the virtual machine obviously picked up when it was uh, starting. Now, let's connect to these virtual machines and have some fun. So let's open the Ranger VM 100. And as you can see that it's already connecting to Ranger VM 100.cloudapp.net means there's a public DNS already as you're created for you. 
and that's what we are connected to with RDP here. And we are going to do the same thing with Ranger VM 200. You click on connect here, it's going to bring that RDP file. You can save it for my purpose. I'm just connecting to it directly. And as you can see, this is Ranger VM 200.cloudapp.net. That's the public endpoint that Azure creates for you and the DNS entry as well. So let's go to 100 here. It takes a little time to start up and get everything. Meanwhile, while these virtual machines are starting, I'm going to go and run my Microsoft Azure PowerShell because I have promised you that everything we do, I'm going to show you as much as possible on uh, PowerShell as well. So the way we'll do it is we're going to add the Azure account, press enter. We are on Cloud Ranger blog. That's our account. You're going to obviously put Euro here. We're connecting to that subscription. It's going to redirect us for credentials. So I'm going to put my information here. Do not forget to do this. Hopefully by now this is becoming a practice for you to always connect and find out, the warning shows up here, to find out which subscription you're connected to. We are on free trial, so I know that whatever I'm doing, I'm going to do it in the right place. Let's see if my machines are up. Okay, they're coming up slowly. Okay, no problems. Let's go to my Ranger VM 100 here. There is a thing I want to show you here. Go to local server. I always want to turn off something here. So when I go to my Internet Explorer, I'm not going to go crazy. So I'm going to connect this to off. Put this here. Um, let's open up my PowerShell window here. As you can see, the internal IP, or as you're called this, the DIP, or DIP, our internal IP is 192.168.1.4, and this is our public IP. Public IP is basically this one. This DNS, rangervm100.cloudapp.net, actually resolves through this public IP, and this is given to you by Azure. And this is one that we got from the virtual network, the VNet, and this was the 1.0 subnet, so we picked up the 1.4 address. So when we come over here, do an IP config, we can see it's given that address, it's DHCP. And we know this is DHCP because we come over here and we are going to check over here. We're going to find that the adapter that was created here does not have any IP address. So it's picked up directly. You do not need a DHCP server here in your virtual networks in Azure because Azure utilizes its own DHCP server to go connect to your subnet and give you that information. Let's move to our net here for my local server. The first thing I want to do here is turn this to off and off. I'm going to leave this open. Over here, as you can see, this one, the internal IP address 192.168.2.4. So if I do IP config, Time. you can see it's 192.168.2.4. So I'm going to do something really interesting right now. I know that this two belongs to the same virtual network, right? So if we go to network here, here, I know that they are part of the same virtual network, but they are different subnets. One is subnet web, one is subnet FTP, one is with the range 192.168.1.0, and one is 2.0. So if I come over here and I try to ping 192.168.2.4, this is Ranger VM 100. I'm basically trying to ping Ranger VM 200 from my Ranger VM 100. Let's see if I get a reply. Uh -huh. As you can see, my this VM from this subnet cannot ping my other VM on the other subnet. This is what isolation is all about. This subnet is isolated, even though they're part of the same virtual network, they're isolated from each other. 
so they cannot communicate with each other within these two subnets. But if you remember, we did talk about one thing, which is that they can access services from another one. How, how is and that's two endpoints. So let's look at this real quick. What are the endpoints of these virtual machines? So if I go to my virtual machines here, I go to Ranger VM 100. My endpoints are for my PowerShell and my remote desktop. And for my Ranger VM 200, my endpoints are, well, I added one more, which was port 80. And I'll show you why I added this endpoint. So Ranger VM 200 has port 80 as one of the endpoints. We just have to remember that. Let's go to Ranger VM 200. I'm going to go to Server Manager. I am going to go, and I'll show you how easy this is, and this is what makes Cloud so interesting, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install IIS. So basically, I'm installing a web server on my Ranger VM 200. Some of you already might have guessed what I'm trying to do here. So let's let this install here on Ranger VM 200. I'm going to go to Ranger VM 100 here. Bring up the Internet Explorer. Ask me later. So I'm on Ranger VM 200. So this is what we have done. We have tried to ping 192.168.2.4, which is Ranger VM 200. We were not able to. But on Ranger VM 200, I'm going to install that web uh, service and let's see what happens. Okay, it's installing. Okay, I had paused the video and the installation is complete on Ranger VM 200. So this is what I'm going to do. If the web server installed correctly on Ranger VM 200, I'm going to Ranger VM 100. Notice this, this is Ranger VM 100. The address for this is 192.168.1.4. I'm going to go HTTP 192.168.2.4. This is the Ranger VM 200's web server. Guess what? We can come to the, we can access the web service or the web server and access the website from Ranger VM 200, from Ranger VM 100, even though we were not able to ping it. They cannot communicate with each other, but they can talk to the services from each other. This is what I'm trying to demonstrate. So we were able to connect, access service across the subnets. And these services only come through the endpoints. So if this endpoint was not created here, we, were, we wouldn't have been able to connect to the web service. As you know, it uses port 80. So this is one of the interesting demonstrations that we wanted to show you after creating this. So there were separate sub subnets, cannot ping each other, but they can access the website. Okay, now let's go back here. I have opened up my Azure here. What can we do? So the first thing I want to do over here is one command that is get azure vnet config. Let's enter that command. You can see that it actually went and got an XML configuration. We cannot view that right now. So I'm going to do this. So we can see that it basically throws an XML file for our entire configuration. So you can see that our address space was 192.168.0.0. But we had two subnets, one was subnet web, one was subnet FTP. This is a very interesting information. You can see how things are. There's not a whole lot of command with virtual nets, but you can do that. So this is something you pick up from here. You go to Cloud Ranger 100 and go to Dashboard. in the wrong spot here. Go to network here, and you create this network. So 
this is the Cloud Ranger dev. So the one that we were seeing over here is everything. So let's go and do this export button. So we are in the networks right now and click on export, free trial. You'll see that it's actually exporting out an XML file. Let's save this file and open this file. You'll see that this is the same information that we have got from here. This to a similar. So you can export this XML file. And there's a lot that can be done with this XML file. So for example, if you delete this network, you can actually import this virtual network through that XML file. Our next session is going to be how you can get this XML file, how you can import this XML file um, as your backup of your virtual network, as well as how you can edit this XML file and create virtual networks through PowerShell by importing those. But I'm just showing you the feature that you can get from there at this point. The other thing I wanted to show you over here is as well, let's do a get Azure VM. And the way you get this is a service name. I know my service name for Ranger VM 100 is Ranger VM 100. I'm going to put a name of my VM here, so which is Ranger VM 101 again, and let's see what we can get. So I want all the information on Ranger VM 100. As you can see, the IP address over here is 192.168.1.4. So I know if I went and did a 200 here, and it had its own cloud service when we created it, we'll see that this one's address is 192.168.2.4. So these are similar informations that you can get from the management portal as well when you go to your virtual machines and click those virtual machines and go there. Those are the interesting information. Okay, so we have pinged this. I have showed you how they can access services. So I installed IIS on Ranger VM 200 and Ranger VM 100 was able to access that. And I created multiple nets over here. So we pretty much covered what we wanted to on this first session. Creating networks, East US and West US here. So these are the various things we have done. Okay, so let's go back to the slides and conclude this session real quick. So it's it became almost an hour session because there was just so much to cover and I wanted to provide that demonstration though we went uh, quite a bit in hurry, but feel free to pause this video and make sure that you go through each and every one of those steps yourself, then you will be very comfortable in creating virtual networks and um, editing them as well as um, making several address spaces with several virtual uh, networks and subnets and talk to each other. Obviously, I've showed you a single scenario where we created a production network as well as a development network. Uh, this is something similar to what you are probably doing on your on-premises virtualizations environment that you create, a, you create one for your production, you create one for your development or multiple developments, and it's similar in Azure. There are subtle differences and there are some significant differences. And as the sessions pass through, we will go over that. I do want to come back to this little flowchart here that's taken directly from uh, Microsoft Azure's website. Um, the three solutions that we have talked about that you could have a no virtual network scenario, you could have a cloud only virtual net scenario, like the one we showed in the demonstration right now, as well as cross premises virtual network. This uh, flowchart here shows you that do you even need a virtual network and what kind of virtual network do you need? Um, this could be important for several reasons. You remember in the demonstration, the first virtual machine that we created, it did not even have a virtual network associated with it and Azure took care of everything. So for example, you wanted to run a web server on there, you could have just run a web server and as far as your, uh, your end users were concerned, they could just go to the public DNS and they could access a web server. So that's a scenario where you would not need a virtual network created for you. But that's very rare. I mean, how many 
uh, people these days have a website which is all static web pages and not talking to any any databases or any backend server uh, it's it's almost quite rare these days so chances are you will probably always create a virtual network and it's always a good practice because it provides you more control on the virtual network that you will create and the IP addresses as you have seen as you went and got those DHCP addresses from the virtual networks that you had created so it's important that those are created but however feel free to look into this and see how it can help you decide uh, when you need a virtual network or not and it's important somewhat um, in your planning even when you're working in your production not just your exam point of view uh, that you look into something like this and then plan out how your networks are designed and before we conclude this it's I just want to reiterate that planning is so important while this seemed like it was very easy and it's it almost makes you um, I don't know lack of terms it almost makes you trigger happy to just go and create as many virtual networks as you want and whatever way you want it but do not forget that several considerations come in for your planning point of view when you are going to connect this to your own premises or you are going to learn a large organization with a lot of networks and a lot of isolations are required there will be a significant amount of planning that has to be done before you go and start creating those but for your lab environment go crazy uh, play with as many virtual networks you can create them uh, create virtual machines on these networks ping each other uh, create web services or other services and see how they talk to each other and how isolation works and that pretty much concludes our this first part like I said there's gonna be multiple parts to uh, virtual uh, Windows Azure virtual networking and we will be going through all those scenarios on the first slide that we had shown to go through the exam details all right so as usual our training site URL is at cloudranger.net forward slash Azure training our YouTube channel is at forward slash Cloud Ranger Network we are also on Twitter at Cloud Ranger blog. There's a Google Plus site as well. Um, you can email me at Sean at CloudRanger.net if you have any specific question. But however, as usual, I would appreciate it if you have any questions. You put that on comments on the site or as well as the YouTube comment section because that's good for everybody else as well because they might have similar questions. Feel free to like this video on YouTube. Uh, do subscribe to the channel as well. This helps a lot and it provides as an encouragement. And uh, thank you for viewing and I'll be seeing you in the next sessions.